What's happening? <laughs> that is not me at all. Okay, buddy. Actually, it's not wrong. What's up everyone and welcome to Website from Scratch Part 2. In this video we're going to be creating a style guide for our website. We're going to be creating global styles for things like the heading tags, the A tags, we're going to create some buttons, input fields. These styles will be globally included throughout our website so whenever we want to create a new page that page will have access to these global styles making it much quicker and easier to create new views and pages. We are going to begin over in our Flippy Coins repository. You can check the code out on GitHub in our app controllers folder. Here we want to create a new controller for our style style guide. Our style guide controller is going to be very simple just like our home controller was in our previous video. I'm going to open up the home controller and I'm going to copy over the entire class. We're going to rename our class style guide and then we're going to update our index function to point to our style guide page view. Here's our HTML head. We want to point this to our style guide HTML head and this will place anything style guide specific inside of our HTML head tags. If we open up our views template default HTML is our default template. That HTML head will be echoed out right here. Then we need our HTML body. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to point the HTML body at our style guide HTML body. Then we're going to load our default template. Now we just have to create our head and our body. And we do that in our app folder, views. And we're going to create a new view folder here for our style guide. And inside of our style guide folder, we're going to create our HTML body and our HTML head. Our HTML head contains things inside of the HTML head tag, so we want to include our CSS for our style guide. This is going to be CSS that is only specific to our style guide view. And we're going to do the same for our JavaScript. We're going to have some JavaScript that's specific just to this view. Just like we created a new style guide view folder, we're going to hop over to our app and our assets folder, and we're going to create a new style guide folder in our CSS folder and our JavaScript folder. In our CSS folder here, it's a new style guide and in this folder we're going to create a global.css file which will contain the style guide page specific CSS. Then we're going to do the same in our JavaScript folder. We're going to create a style guide folder and inside here we're going to create a global.js file which will contain style guide page specific JavaScript. For this video our global.js file is not going to contain anything. We will get to that in future videos so we're just going to leave our document ready function here for future use and close that file. So that concludes our HTML underscore head. This has been loaded into our template here inside of our HTML head tags. We have our CSS and we have our JavaScript files. So the files we need to have open for coding is our HTML body for our style guide, our style guide CSS file open, and we also need to open up our CSS templates default global CSS. This is the file right here that is included on every page. It's included right here. Every view gets the template default global CSS, and this is where we're replacing most of the styles. Now in our HTML body, I'm gonna create a container for all of our styles. We're gonna call it style guide container, and we're gonna put this style in the style guide specific CSS file. We're gonna put a margin bottom on that one. Then we're gonna go ahead and create a header for our style guide. We're gonna place our style guide header class in our style guide specific CSS file, and we're gonna align this text to the center. So let's head over to our website, localhost slash coins. Here's where we left off. In our last video, we created our home view. Since we created a style guide controller, we just have to do slash style guide. Hit enter and we have loaded our style guide view. Now we'll go ahead and create a row container. Each new style we add here is going to have this class. It's going to be a style guide row. The style guide row is specific to our style guide page, so we're going to again put it in our global CSS for our style guide view. And each row is going to get a margin top and a padding top of 40 pixels, and we're going to put a border bottom on it of one pixel, so we get a little separation between each of the different styles. Then we're going to use an h3 tag for the title of each row. Under our title for the row, we're going to display out the CSS class or tag that you're targeting, in this case, h1. Then we have our content for the row. Take the style, we're going to place it inside of our style guide styles, and we're going to do a margin top on the row content, so it's bumped down a little bit from the heading. The content is simply an example of what it looks like. In this case here, we're going to do the h1 tag and we're going to give it some sample text here to display out on the page. Now we have to style up our h1 tag. We're going to go up to our templates global CSS file where we are going to place our h1 styles. h1 is just going to have a nice blue color, normal font weight, no padding, and it's going to be font size of 40 pixels. Now anytime we use the h1 tag throughout our site, you should see a heading 1 that looks like this. And notice how this also changed because we were using an h1 tag around the style guide heading as well. 
Now we're going to repeat our row here for the h2 tag and the h3 tag. Update this to be h2 heading 2 and this will be h3 heading 3. And the only difference in these is going to be font size. We're in our global template CSS so we're going to add an h2 and an h3 here. And we're going to decrease by 10 pixels for each heading just like that. For our h3 tag we're going to remove our blue color. It'll just be white. Over in our row content sections, we have to make sure we update the tags so they correctly represent that row and what we're trying to display. In this case, h2 and h3. Refresh our page, and we have our h2 tag there and our h3 tag and what they look like. Next up is our a tag. We're going to create a default class for our a tag, and we're going to call it a-default. And then the hover class is a-default hover. Create a little preview here for it in our content. Give it a href of nothing with our class that we're going to style up and display the text link. Over in our global CSS here, right above the body, we're going to start out by initializing all A tags so they have a text decoration none. Because by default, they will have an underline on them. Then down here, we're going to create our first class. We're going to call it a default. We're going to give it a green color, no decoration, font size 14. Make sure the cursor is a pointer and display it in line block. Then we need our hover, and for our hover, all we're going to do is do a text decoration of underline. Back on our style guide, down by the very bottom, we have our a tag. We have a link with the class a default on it, and it's green, and when you hover over it, it underlines. The next row is going to contain the styles for our buttons. Any button we create, we're going to create a div, and we're going to give it a class of default button. This is just going to contain global button things, not the color. So in order to specify a color for the button, you're also going to specify a class for the button color. And that will be button color dash and we can put in here red, green, or blue. And that button color is also going to have a hover associated with it. So let's create a sample for our first button. We'll do the blue one first. Now all buttons need a class default button and then we need the button color that we want. So let's style up our default button. Back in our template CSS file, we're going to give our button a nice border radius, font size of 20 pixels. The text will always be in the center, padding, and make it so that the text on the button cannot be highlighted. Then we want our hover state for our default button. And the hover state, we just need to do a cursor pointer. Since we're hovering over a div, not an a tag, we need to actually call out the cursor to be a pointer. The other thing we're going to place on our default button is an active state. So when you click down on the button, we're going to give it a nice box shadow inset. So it gives it a kind of a nice little glassy feel and look to it. That's our default button. Now we need to style up our button color blue. And all we need to do for our button color blue is give it a background of blue and make sure the color is white. Then give it a nice little hover effect. We're going to lighten it up a little bit when you hover over it. We're going to do the exact same thing for green, except for specify a green color. And the exact same thing for our red button. Over in our content, we're just going to add two more buttons. One for green and one for red. For this to be green and update this to be red. We have our blue button, our green button, and our red button. You click on it, it gives you that nice little inset that we, add, that we added for the active state. It's a blue button, active for the green button, active for the red button. Moving on, we're going to look at our input fields. We're going to create a default style input default and input default hover. Create an input tag here, give it our input default class, and give it a placeholder input field. Back in our style guide here, create our input default. Class. Outline is none, nice thick border, some nice padding, border radius around the edges, big font size, background is dark, color is white, width is always 100%, font family is inherited from the parent. Then we want to do a focus, and on focus we want to make the input field border glow. We have our border, and we have our box shadow, which is going to give it the glowing effect whenever you are focused on an input field. Down here we have our input field, and if we focus it by clicking in it, we get that nice little glowy effect around the border. And clicking outside of it, it gets unfocused. Next row we're going to create is our input error. We're going to call this class input default error. So anytime maybe you enter the wrong username, the wrong password, the email doesn't match, we will get this default error class. And we're going to update our little output here to default error. And we'll place some different placeholder text inside of there. Input field with error. For, the for our styling, we're going to copy our input default, add on a dash error, and we're going to add a red glowy around it. Now below our input field that we just did, we should see our input error. This is what the input error class looks like. Nice little red glowy around it, indicating that you have entered something incorrectly. The next row is going to be our input error message. This would say something like invalid password, invalid username, email incorrect, whatever the error message is, it's going to look like this. Our class is going to be input-error-message. Update our class right here, change this to a div, because this is not an input. And for our example, we'll just say input error message. Now there's not much to the input error message. Give it a red color, bump it down five pixels from the top because this will be displayed underneath an input field and we want some space between the input and the text. And then we're gonna do a display none on it. 
because globally we do not want to display any error messages until we hit the server and got the response back so we know to display those error messages. So by default they get displayed none. Now to overwrite this we're going to hop over to our style guide view specific CSS. And on this page we're going to do a display block. Now the error message example will display on our style guide page. Refreshing our style guide page, scroll to the bottom and we should see our input error message. There it is. And this input error message when we get to coding would actually be displayed right here below the input field when it airs out and gets the red border around it. The next row is going to contain our options. Then we have our hover for the default option and then we have our default option selected. We're going to start off with our default option. That's our option which is default and it's not going to be selected. Then we're going to give an example of what it would look like if it was selected. Default option selected, this will be option 2. The default option is just a div with a border around it. It'll be gray unless it's selected, like this one, then it will have a green border around it, indicating that you've selected that option. Over in our template CSS, we're going to create our default option. We have our default option hover and our default option selected. The default option is going to be a gray background, two pixel border, has some nice padding on it, and it's also going to be border radius with a font size of 20 pixels. And we're going to give a user select of none so that you cannot highlight the text within the option. And for the hover, we're going to give it a border of two pixels, but this time it's going to be a green border and we're going to have a cursor pointer on it so the user knows that they can click it. And for our option selected, it's going to be pretty much the same as the default option, except it's going to have a two pixel border and that border will stay green. Back in the browser, we have our option one, which is not selected, and our option two, which is selected. And you see when I hover over it, we get the green border around it. Last but not least is our default content sections for our website. We have a title of section default container. Class will be called section default container. And then we have a section default container inner. For our example down here in the content, let's paste our section default container. And then inside of this, we're going to do another div. And this is our default section container inner. Let's get some dummy content in here, just like that. Let's copy our section default container and let's create a class for it. Now we want our section default containers to have a border radius, gray background, and a nice little glowy border around them. So that's the style we have for our default container. Then for the inner div, we're just going to give it some padding, 10 pixels. Check that out over here in our style guide and there's our default section container. Anytime we have any content we want to display, we're going to put it in a container that looks like this. The last thing we're going to add to our website is some padding to the body so it doesn't go right up to the edge of the browser. Over in our template default HTML, we're going to wrap our HTML body in a div. We're going to give this a class and we're going to call it body container. And this is a global style, so this will be in our global templates default CSS as well. However, we need to adjust a little bit for mobile and desktop. So we're going to add ourselves some media queries down here, one for desktop and one for mobile. On desktop, when we are 1200 pixels or greater, we're going to put a margin top on it. We're going to do a padding left, 20 pixels, and a padding right of 20 pixels. We're also going to do margin top 20. We're going to do the same thing for mobile, except for we're going to downgrade this to only 10 pixels. Now every page we create will be wrapped in that body container, and we will have a nice little padding on each side here and on the top. And that is going to wrap up our style guide creation. We have created a style guide, and now we have all these styles we can use globally when we start creating new views. We're going to start creating things like the login page, the sign up page. It's going to be quick and easy because we've already styled up things like the input fields, the sections, the error messages. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.